Ha ha ha, guess, guess you forgot to install Audacity. Yippee. Ooh, I get to install Audacity. Yeah, that's why I'm going to be talking with this. That should actually be working now. Okay, cool. Let's just do a... Um, cut. Um, oh my god, I'm going to do the YouTuber thing. I'm going to do the YouTuber thing. Oh my god. No fucking way. Wait, I should probably test that this works. It did work. Nice. Awesome. Anyway, let's start the video, shall we? This is a magical story all about a man called Bruce Gilden. I distinctly remember the first time I interacted with Bruce Gilden's work. It was a YouTube video of him walking around New York City, spotting characters, approaching them, releasing the shutter, and then leaving again onto the next character. Much like how Susan Sontag in On Photography talks about the documentary photographer being a hunter with a camera, gazing upon people with detachment, with professionalism, and not with compassion and empathy. It's safe to say that Gildan has made a name for himself in street photography, and I actually quite like a lot of his older work. It's interesting, right? Because his older work's kind of like this actual, honest, actual street photography, right? I actually quite like street photography as a genre. People people kind of look at it and go, well, you know, you're just taking pictures of people on the street. This isn't really like art or anything. Well, it doesn't have to be, you know. You can just take photos because you want to. That is allowed. You can start to picture in your head where these people are going, what they're doing, what kind of lives they lead. Granted, not very well, but let's, let's get on to that. We'll get on to that later. It could be argued, however, that with the project Face, and the subsequent project after that, Gildan has very much changed up his style of photography to be one that I am not a very big fan of. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this in this video essay that you clicked on. This this is yeah. And also for the people who are on this channel and just expected more geometry dash videos, um Surprise, I guess. If you like photographic theory, stick around. If not, I mean, you can if you want, but no pressure. The things that I don't really like about the project face is that I feel like Gildan's really going at it with the entire value of it to be to shock. He's going to shock you. He's going to make you shocked with the images. And you're going to look at them and you're going to be like, wow, that's an ugly person. Well... He deliberately makes them look worse than they truly are. But again, we'll get onto that later. Where his older black and white street photography always had the primary ethical concern of consent, the issues that could be taken with the project face are very different. With face, the concern is whether these images being taken perpetuate harmful and short-sighted stereotypes about the often voiceless people that Gildan photographs, whether intentionally or not. There was an article that I looked at by a photographer called Roger May. He created this article called Taking Liberties, Taking Shortcuts, and Taking Advantage of People. Roger May is a photographer who's been operating in the region of Appalachia in America for a very, very long time now. It's pretty much kind of been his life's work. And when Gildan came there for a... <laughs> fuck's sake. When Gildan arrived there... Wow. When Gildan arrived there as a part of a Vice project with, with another photographer called, Tra with another photographer called T Tracy Kranitz, he makes it very clear that Vice went at it of the approach of, well, we've got Gildan, you know, we got this, we got this, we got this, we got this guy, we got this guy who does these, th these, these wacky. These, these wacky photographs. Oh, we can get some proper clicks on this, can't we? Oh, fuck yeah, that'd be brilliant. You know, get some get some good old dough. And <laughs> what the fuck am I on about? <laughs> However, Stacey Granite is also also has talked about this and her interaction with Bruce Gilden. Um, he's not the most brilliant of guys. On an Instagram post of hers where she talked about her experience with Gildan of working on this Vice project. She 
basically kind of outlined her experience with it. She felt like complete shit because Gildan just made her feel like she was just there. I mean, in fact, that's actually what he said. Quote, This is my shoot. You are just here, he says to Stacy. Well, he complains about his p potential subject looking plain. <laughs> what the fuck? What? what is this guy doing? This information, both from Kranitz's Instagram posts and May's article, may give us an insight into Gildan's headspace with this photography, i.e. it's not very good. It's also worth noting, of course, that Vice is a company. It's there to make money. And as many... Uh, and as many drugs related documentary pieces that they may put out on their YouTube channel and however many hip sounding articles that they put out they are a business that's 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 their entire fucking thing they're there to make they're there to make the wonga how many uh, how many how many colloquialisms for money can i use in this video it's very very deliberate that they chose gildan for a large project is what i'm saying and I think they knew what they were doing. <laughs> However, let's look at some other let's look at some other photographers' work related to this. There's two photographers that I looked at for this um, who work with similar types of people to Bruce Gilden. Um, one of them is a photographer called Katie Grannon. She made this project, the Ninety Nine, where she photographs pretty much the same kind of people that Gildan would target appearance-wise, and she presents them in a really, really kind of humanizing way. It's really nice, actually. It's really refreshing to see these people not trod on, and actually see them being respected in the photos that they have. I feel like Gildan's photos are very much uh, mug shots, basically. And it's interesting that I bring up the word mug shot, that's very deliberate. And Gildan has made it very deliberate as well. Tom, but, but that's an interesting point because, as you know, I like mug shots. Mm -hmm. And yet I think it's some of the best photography ever. And those guys had no inclination that they were doing artistically beautiful pictures. Like, that's just his entire deal. And mug shot suggests something, doesn't it? Mm, I wonder what it suggests about these vulnerable people. Hmm, that they're having mug shots taken of them. Hmm, I wonder what that could possibly suggest. <sighs> the thing is, right, is I wrote this essay, like, fucking ages ago, and now I'm only just fucking remembering how fucking awful this guy is. Holy shit. How are you doing, Hans? You doing good? This is Hans. Say hello to Hans, everybody. Hans is, Hans is wonderful. He's a, he's a little, he's a little goober. Sorry if I just rubbed my leather jacket all over the mic and fucking ruin the sound quality. The sound quality will be shit anyway. It doesn't fucking matter what I could, what I do. I could genuinely just record on my phone and it wouldn't make the blindest bit of fucking difference. Another photographer that I like the work of and I think is kind of relevant here is a photographer called Philip Lorca de Corsia. His work is, again, street photography and it kind of, it's kind of like what I wish Gildan was nowadays. Where before his black and white photography was this honest portrayal of people on in the streets of New York and wherever the hell else he was taking photos. This is kind of what I feel like Philip Lorca de Corsia actually achieves with his with his newer stuff. I think that it's just so kind of humanizing. Again, as I said earlier, you can imagine what kind of what kind where, where this person may go yeah, may be going. Of course, it's all just educated guesses. Of course, and I mean, of course, those educated guesses do come from our biases that we know of or not. It's 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 good. I like I like his work. This is kind of how I think this should be done, or like alternate history guild and where he doesn't go down the route of becoming a magnum photographer. Oh, you just reminded me of Magnum Photography. Thank you so much for reminding me of Magnum Photography. I have opinions on the Magnum Photography group. Um, let me just look at their website real quick, because um, this, is, this is interesting. 
right let's just look at let's just look at um so of course they've got a shop right because of course any photography organization would need a shop wouldn't they that's the most important thing oh here it is here it is here it is here it is i found it i found the funny i found the funny everyone magnum is a community of thought a shared human quality a curiosity about what is going on in the world a respect for what is going on and a desire to transcribe it visually in 1947, following the aftermath of the Second World War, four pioneering photographers founded a new legendary alliance. Legendary alliance! <laughs> legendary! This is them describing this. They are calling themselves legendary. You do not get to do that. That's what other people can call you if you actually are. I'm gonna lose my fucking shit. Combining an extraordinary range of individual styles into one powerful collaboration da -da 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 started over a, cele a celebratory bottle of champagne, the most important artist <laughs> they started the most important artists cooperative ever created ever ever created ever Ever. They don't get to say. <laughs> Who's going to stop these people? Someone has to stop these people. They can't be allowed to get away with this. You can't keep getting away with <laughs> it! Just in the this is going to be like the most batshit first video ever, but at this point, who the fuck cares? I sure as hell don't. You know, I'm sure you don't either. You know, you, you get to listen to me losing my shit. That's going to be fun. I cannot talk that much as to whether Gildan cares that much about the money or not, but the fact of the matter is that his work does make money. Vice would never have brought him on board for a project if they didn't think they were going to get some divisive images that could be used as clickbait to get ad revenue, but it goes deeper than that. The connotation of guilt and shame projected onto the subject when comparing his images to mugshots, the complete obsession of the idea of the face telling all his fellow street portrait photographers composed their images with context, realistic composing, and empathy, while he uses a flash to reduce the image to a two-dimensional caricature. With the goal to make his images eye-catching, he ends up dehumanizing his subjects. Subjects who could be homeless, could be sex workers, or could be in poverty. The people he chooses, the people who don't look plain, are the people who need humanizing in the mainstream the most. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thanks. Thanks for watching. Um, that probably didn't make any sense at all. That probably didn't like sound decent at all. But hopefully, I can start making videos regularly. Well, not regularly, but like video essays regularly. I.e., once every few months or so. There's a few things I wouldn't mind making videos on, but. It, it shows how I won't be jump to dash and it shows how I won't be gaming. I've, I've, I've done a lot of growing. I've done a lot of... I've, I've changed a lot, basically. And I may never return to gaming. Well, I mean, I still do, but I probably... I definitely don't to the extent I used to. I kind of have a life now, which is quite nice. Um, but, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye.